Welcome to Surgery Squad's Virtual Lumpectomy. I'm Dr. Susie, and I'll be assisting you with this procedure today. Breast cancer is a type of cancer that originates in the inner lining of the breast's milk ducts. And with the exception of skin cancer, it's the most common type of cancer in the United States. While we don't know what causes breast cancer, we do know that certain risk factors, such as age, genetics, personal health history, and diet, put people at a higher risk of developing the disease. Fortunately for our patient today, and the 200,000 women and men that are diagnosed with breast cancer each year, there are a number of treatment options available. This includes surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, hormonal treatments, and holistic medicine. Recently, our patient was diagnosed with stage 1 breast cancer after her doctor discovered a 2-centimeter tumor, or lump, within her right breast. Her doctor also determined that it is not spread into the lymph nodes in her underarms. If it had, we would need to reevaluate her treatment and breast cancer stage. One of the steps that we'll take today to eliminate our patient's breast cancer is a surgical procedure known as a lumpectomy. A lumpectomy is a brief breast-preserving surgery that is used to remove a tumor from the breast. During the operation, 2 to 5 millimeters of the healthy tissue surrounding the tumor will also be removed for precautionary purposes. As with any surgery, there are some risks involved. For a lumpectomy, the common risks are a loss of sensation in the treated breast and breasts that don't match in size and shape after the surgery. If you're up for the challenge, let's put on our gloves and see what we can do. To begin the surgery, we need to start an IV to provide our patient with fluids and medication. I've already tied a tourniquet around her upper arm. Can you find a suitable vein in the patient's hand? That'll work! Sterilize the insertion area using an alcohol wipe. Insert the needle and advance the angiocatheter into the vein. The small burst of blood that just appeared in the angiocatheter hub is known as a flashback. This lets us know that the angiocatheter is correctly positioned in the patient's vein. Now I'll release the tourniquet. While applying gentle pressure over the vein to collapse it, you can remove the needle. This will reduce the amount of blood that may discharge out of the angiocatheter when the needle is removed. Once you remove the needle, it will be properly disposed into a sharps container. I'll lock the IV tubing to the angiocatheter by rotating the locking mechanism. Lastly, we need to secure the IV with tape and test the line. For those with a weak stomach or have children in the room, I need to let you know that the next few steps get a bit graphic and contain nudity. This procedure may not be appropriate for work or school environments. Click the Continue button when ready. Next, we'll use a chemical antiseptic known as chlorhexidine to cleanse the patient's skin. Use the applicator to apply the chlorhexidine to the surgical site. While some anesthesiologists may prefer to give a patient a general anesthetic using the IV line, we'll be administering it today using a face mask. Once the patient begins breathing in the anesthetic gas, her bloodstream will absorb the gas and carry it to her brain. At this point, her brain will stop receiving signals from the nerves in her body, allowing her to be completely asleep and pain-free during the surgery. Start by placing the mask over the patient's nose and mouth. Once it's in place, we'll turn on the anesthetic gas. Now that our patient is unconscious, we'll insert an endotracheal tube into her mouth and down into the windpipe. This will help her breathe and provide a constant mixture of oxygen and anesthetic gases during surgery. The size and location of a tumor is a deciding factor when a surgeon determines where to make the incision. Our patient's tumor is located just above the nipple of her right breast and about 2 centimeters from the surface. 
I think the best procedure to use in this case is what is known as a bat wing mastopexy. Use the pin to outline the location of the tumor. Now sketch where we'll be making our incisions. Perfect, but we're far from done. Grab your scalpel and make the necessary incisions. This will allow us access into the breast to remove the tumor. Now remove the tumor and tissue from the breast using forceps. Great! I'll send this to our pathology lab for examination. In the meantime, why don't you go ahead and close the incision? Before we finish closing the incision, we need to irrigate the wound using a bulb drain. Drag the stylet and tubing through the incision to create a small puncture hole near the bottom of the breast. Great work! This tube will allow fluids to drain properly and aid in the healing process. Now we can finish closing the incision. Excellent work! After the surgery, our patient will be moved to a recovery room within the hospital where her heart rate, temperature, and blood pressure will be monitored by our wonderful healthcare team for the next few hours. Typically, a patient doesn't have to stay overnight unless they're having their lymph nodes removed in addition to the lumpectomy. When our patient returns home, she needs to ensure that she is following her doctor's recovery guidelines. These guidelines will include getting adequate rest, taking pain medication as directed, taking sponge baths until her sutures are removed, investing in a good sports bra that will help minimize any movement that may cause pain. After a lumpectomy, most patients will need to undergo five to seven weeks of radiation therapy to ensure that the cancer is gone. The radiation therapy may also affect the patient's options for breast reconstruction. And that's a lumpectomy. I hope you've enjoyed playing and you've learned a bit about breast cancer and the lumpectomy procedure. If you're up to it, check out another procedure on surgerysquad.com.